Losing sucks. Especially in combat sports. No one to blame, just you. The feeling can be soul crushing. That individual effort, all of that training, all of that time, all of the pressure, the expectations, none of them met. All of it crumbled. It's just you in your thoughts. But it only continues to suck if you give up. Losing sucks for a variety of reasons. But one of the biggest reasons is the expectations that you put on yourself and that you may feel the team puts onto you. Also the time sink of training. You may have put months into a match only to come up short. Your friends and family came to watch you put on this fight only for you to lose. You feel like you let everybody down. Friends, families, coach. Then something that I don't talk too much about is the dopamine crash especially if it's kind of a big event or a big match. All of these coupled together make for a pretty bad time. One solace in this, and why it sucks though, is that it sucks for everybody. Doesn't matter at the highest level of combat sports, all the way to your hobbyist. Most people that compete lose. There are obviously exceptions to that, and well, you know, I'm definitely not one of them. There's very few people that go through their entire career undefeated. But since everybody loses, here are some key things to avoid if you plan to compete. Some pitfalls to look out for when you lose is not to seek excuses or blame. If you look for only the excuses and only to blame other people, you're not going to grow. And it's easy. It's easy to blame others. You can blame your coach. You can blame your teammates. You can blame your family. It's so easy. But you know what? There's only one person to blame, and it's you. We'll get to that part here in a second, but remember, the outcome does not identify who you are. You are already doing amazing things by competing. One of my coaches used to say that 99% of people never step into the ring or step onto the mat to compete, and I tend to believe him. So when looking at it as like, oh man, I'm a winner, yeah, you are a winner. You went out there and competed. That takes a small victory in and of itself. If you identify yourself as a winner, reclassify what the victory is. You went out there to compete. Try not to fall into that, I'm a winner and I lost, what am I now? Another thing is the mindset. This is such a first world problem, especially here in America. You get the opportunity to compete. Not a lot of people have that opportunity. We're very privileged to be able to live in a time where we can choose to pay money, especially as hobbyists, to compete on any random Saturday. And for jiu-jitsu tournaments, they can get up to over $200 to compete. And since money really isn't in the sport of jiu-jitsu yet, Craig Jones, I'm watching you, we are kind of stuck in this little like, we're doing this because it's a fun thing, even as a professional athlete, if you consider yourself one. Remember, we get the opportunity to compete, and unless you're catastrophically broken from competing, you get to compete again. And that leads me to the moniker of the dojo. Nanakorobi yaok, or shichiten haki. Fall down seven times, stand up eight. I live by this moniker. Fall down seven times, stand up eight. When I was a kid and sick all the time, life would hit me, I would get sick. My goal would be just to get back up, to get back to school or whatever it is I was doing. I have it on my geese, I have it on the belt, it's on the wall like I pointed out, it's on my gloves, it's everywhere, rash guards, I live by this and I try to instill into my students the same idea. You get to live to fight another day. So as long as you get back up, man, you're doing a good job. And that is the start of what we do post losing. Like everyone else, you want to learn the way to win, but never to accept the way to lose. What we do when we lose really tells us more about who we are as a person than when you win. What I mean by that is how do we cope with losing? What do we do when we lose that, you know, makes us different than others? First thing I highly recommend you should do is take ownership of the loss. Remember previously I talked about blame? A lot of people, and in my experience as a coach, a lot of people will blame others, mostly the coach. And it's fine to blame others sometimes if it really does matter if the ref stepped in when they shouldn't have or something like that. 
Another thing that we have to do when we lose is to acknowledge the emotions that we're feeling and that they are indeed valid. Now, I'm not trying to get all soft space on you, but especially after a big event when you hit that dopamine crash that I was talking about earlier, you can really get in your feelings about you as a martial artist and as a person. And you just have to acknowledge that it's normal to feel bad after a loss. But again, as I've reiterated a few times, it's what we do with that loss that identifies us. And when you have multiple losses, what does that mean? Who do we identify as? What is that? How do we move forward? Don't dwell on it. Just because you lose a match or a few doesn't mean anything. It doesn't change who you are. But it can if you dwell on it, especially in the training room. You'll start thinking, oh, I can't land this here. I definitely can't land this here. Or you start making more excuses for your training and maybe you're just not good at this. You can't dwell on that. Acknowledge that the emotions are real. You are depressed about losing. You are in the middle of a dopamine crash. Just move forward with it. Continue training and do this next part, which is study and fix your problems. Hopefully you have tape of your competition. And if you have tape of it, you can look at it and study what went wrong. Now, this can be tricky in my opinion because it could fall from one thing. In jiu-jitsu, it could be as simple as letting them pass your guard and you could never recover. This has happened to me a lot and that is the onus of my problem. They passed my guard, from there my side control escapes were not up to par, my defense to submissions was not there, and I lost. In striking, it could be something like you got hit really hard and rocked and then you got gun shy and because your defense wasn't there. Maybe you landed your best punch at 100% power, flush, and that person is still standing there. That can take the confidence out of you. So how do we fix that? Generate more power. Look at your tape and figure out what it is you did and what it is you can do better in the next match so you can move forward. And as I stated a few times, the goal is to move forward, to progress. You don't wanna just sit in it, dwell on it, loathe. It'll consume you. I don't like hitting someone while they're down because they are getting hit everywhere on YouTube, but Ronda Rousey, for example, is not a very good loser. When she lost, she dwelled on it. She spent that entire time from Holly Holm to Amanda Nunes radio silent, did no media, and then lost again, and then just disappeared and went to go do WWE. That's not how we handle losses, especially once that gets in your head. Don't be like Ronda. Be more like Conor McGregor. And I hate that I just said those words. Give me your pants. No! When Conor McGregor first lost to Nate Diaz, what did he do? He acknowledged that he lost, and then he decided to work harder and move forward. Dominic Cruz, when he lost, he accepted the loss and moved forward. Demetrius Johnson, the GOAT, what happened when he lost? He accepted the loss and moved forward. That's how winning is done. You move forward. Loss is the catalyst for growth. Sometimes we get stagnant and if we win a lot or win a lot in training, that going out and competing and losing is gonna be the catalyst for growth, meaning you're gonna come back and train harder and be better. But sometimes we need to get knocked down to stand back up and run forward yet again. Also, we need to fix our mindset. Not only are we moving forward, but remember, we are grateful for the opportunity to be able to train. We are grateful for the opportunity to be able to compete. We get to compete, we get to do these things. How lucky are we that we have this ability to do this? That, mm, that's, I really wanna drive that home. Not everybody can go out and compete, you get to. So embrace it, move forward, compete, fix your problems. Don't be a weirdo. And now that our mindset is fixed, we can move forward being comfortable. We don't have to be scared of losing. We've already lost. Just keep moving forward. Another way to cope with the loss is to like this video. Oh man, I am getting so good at this. 10 out of 10. You guys, you know you like that. For that, you gotta hit the subscribe button, 100%. Now the reason I'm making this video is twofold. One, I want you to now have these tools to be able to move forward after you've lost. Once you master the art of losing, you're always gonna be a winner. Another reason is I wanted to share with you a personal anecdote on this journey for me and the art of losing. I've been doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in earnest since 2015. In those nine years, I have competed at every belt level up until brown because that is what I am currently, a brown belt. And I can say with I'm sure satisfaction to my haters that I won a match at white belt and then I never won a match again. 
<laughs> Recently, with my brown belt, I decided I wanted to compete more. And compete more, I did. I have competed almost once a month for the past eight months. I've had a fight to win super fight. I've competed at IBJJF Worlds, Nogi Worlds. I've competed at PANS. But I am happy to share with you, after seven years of losing, I have finally won. Before I started competing so frequently, I was resigned to the fact that I wasn't a doer. I was just a coach and an instructor that liked to pretend he could do in the training room. I wanted to compete more and I wanted to compete well. So right before I decided to compete a lot, I decided to get some good training in outside of my bubble here and train at Charlotte Jiu Jitsu. Coach Piper allowed me to join their team and go to Nogi Worlds. A small stable of fighters competed there and I was one of them and I was lucky and you know, thankful for the opportunity to be able to compete. I changed my mindset. I no longer was just a coach and an instructor. I was a competitor, an athlete. I was treating my body well. I was working out, I was eating right. All of this has culminated in me finally getting past the curse that I had upon myself and I finally won a match. Much to the consternation of my haters, I'm sure. But probably still to them because it's jujitsu and not Jeet Kune Do or some other thing that they're like, ha have some identity of me of. Basically, the reason I'm telling you this is that seven year dry spell of losing, despite competing semi-regularly, just keep going forward. It took seven years for me to get my W back. I really needed it. It was great. Not, not gonna get it twisted. So keep training. Your win is right around the corner. I can guarantee you that. As long as you keep training, that win will come. Does that win mean you get your hand raised at the end of a match and a tournament? Maybe. It could also be something that you're one of the most well-respected, loved training partners in your gym. And remember, if you fall down, get back up.